Hey, what's up guys? JB here, and welcome to another episode of my Future Look series. In case you've been living under a rock and didn't know, Final Fantasy XIII and Lightning here are part of the latest two and a half year anniversary celebration over on the Japanese side. And you know, no matter which gacha game that Lightning seems to make an appearance in, I feel like she always generates a good amount of hype. She is a fan favorite character and definitely one of the premier badasses in the entire Final Fantasy universe. So today I want to preview Lightning's kit and give my take on it and see how she's going to stack up against all of the other great Lightning Elemental options that we have access to today. So with that said, let's just dive right in. And as we do, let's start with Lightning's TMR. And this one is okay, you know, not the greatest one that I've ever seen, since you really would only ever consider this one for a mono elemental lightning party. And that's because it's bringing that 25 lightning attack buff. On top of that, it's also buffing the party for 30% attack. So from that standpoint, for a damage increase buff, I think it's pretty decent. It does have two casts on it as well. The buffing range on it is pretty significant too, at up to four range. So that's definitely a plus, you know, in that respect, it gives you some flexibility in the positioning of where and how you can use the buff. So it is a decent overall TMR. In terms of lightning stats, let's first look at her attack. And here she's actually tied with Cloud and a few other units for the current highest base attack value in the game at 426. And she is among the top 10 as well when it comes to innate total attack at 584. She's getting an above average dex value here at 256. And she sits right at the UR average in terms of her luck at 236. In terms of her agility, her starting value of 64 definitely isn't anything to write home about. But 62 of that is her base agility value, which is actually very, very good. Her resistances are pretty decent as well. She gets 10% to both slash and missile. And a very nice 20% to magical based attacks. So again, always a nice spot to be when you are resistant to all three of the primary damage types in the game. Moving on, her hit points here at just over 3600 are sitting right at the UR average. I will say though, in terms of more of an attack focus role, her HP is actually in a pretty good spot. I do also like her ailment resistances here with disable, frostbite, and immobilize. Her mastery ability definitely isn't the most exciting one I've ever seen, but a 15% lower AP consumption is a very nice quality of life and will certainly make a noticeable impact in terms of her AP sustain and her ability to be run without Ziza's bells. In terms of the negatives I'm seeing here for Lightning, no defense or spirit. Her innate accuracy isn't so hot either. She's sitting at 170% innate accuracy, and that's including one of the passives that we'll talk about here in a moment. And that 170% value has her sitting somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of her innate starting accuracy. I wanted to point out here as well that she is neutral when it comes to pierce damage, which will certainly have her a bit wary of Noctis and especially Oberon, a couple of her her main earth counters. Okay, so let's look at lightning support abilities and counters next. And in terms of an all-purpose build, I think in nearly all situations, she's going to be wanting to have her main job passive here for that 12% agility and that 40% defense penetration. Pairing with that, you could go a couple of directions, but I think in many cases, I would probably be going with this missile attack and luck-based passive here. You know, she does have a number of missile-based attacks at her disposal that we'll see in the skills overview. And that added luck will help her out a little bit in terms of her middling starting accuracy. In terms of secondary build options, you know, all of the passives here are actually pretty good and I think there will probably be a time and a place for really any of them. But you know, maybe depending on the map, you could consider more of a range build and, and opt for that plus one range passive here as well. For counter abilities, I think there is one clear choice for lightning and that's the counter that's going to come with her new main job. And this one is a near carbon copy of Astrius's counter and it gives that above average 30% chance to preemptively hit the enemy for a 121% non element elemental attack, which will then restore 20 AP back to lightning. The only difference between this one and Astrius's counter is that this one is missile based damage rather than slash. It comes in with that 3 range on it as well, which is very nice. Moving on now to Lightning's main kit, and let's start with her buffs. And the first one here is a self buff. It's going to give her a 3 hit, 50% all damage barrier, and that comes along with 25% slash and missile resist on top of it. If that weren't enough, it's also going to give her a follow up attack for the next 3 turns in battle. So this is another similarity here to Astrius in that she has a follow up attack. Now the modifier on hers isn't quite as strong, but if you build up her attack and maybe some man eater on her, it will still hit pretty hard. 
hard. Those damage resist mitigation buffs here are very nice for her survivability and definitely inches her closer towards that bruiser roll so long as these buffs are active. Her next buff here offers some very nice party utility, giving her allies 25% agility and 30 accuracy. On top of that, it's also restoring 10 AP back to Lightning. Now, as we talked a little bit about earlier, Lightning does have a very nice base agility value. So this buff will increase her agility by nearly 16. And that's very, very significant. That 30 accuracy that she's getting here as well will go a long way in helping her build up against any evade threats out there. So two very solid utility skills here for Lightning. Looking now at her attacks, and her first one is essentially the same skill as Cloud's Braver ability. And this one has a range three, range height one, with a 121% mod attack. Importantly though, it's giving that 25% slash resistance down, and that's coming in prior to the damage. And simply put, you know, this is one of the better low cost AP skills in the game. I think anyone that has played Cloud out there knows that this skill can do quite a bit of damage. All right, her next attack here is notably a missile attack. And this one has a base range of four with another two range coming on the AOE. It has a range height of one with another range height that it can get on the area of effect. It has a large 200% damage mod that is actually gonna buff her for 40% defense penetration prior to the damage. And this one actually has a new mechanic tied into it as well. And what happens here is if Lightning gets a killing blow with this attack, she restores 15 AP. And that can actually proc up to two times per use of this skill. So this attack has some similarities to Barrage. It has that very large diamond area of effect. So this is a very, very nice attack here. And it's also giving her access to that alternate damage type all within her main job kit. So definitely always nice to have that flexibility. I do also like this sort of theme that they've been building up with the lightning elements with that AP restoration sort of ability. I can imagine maybe pairing this with a buff from Cloud with his soldier's honor and potentially restoring up to 40 AP if lightning were to crit and kill two enemies with this attack. And that would actually have her gaining back several AP in, in, in that scenario. All right, next up, she has a range three, range height one, single target attack with a medium 165% mod. And this one is gonna break physical barriers prior to the damage. So this is another, you know, very decent ability. It's always nice to have a barrier break in your toolbox. This one is just a bit limited by that range on it though. And next one up here is a range four, range height one, single target attack with a large 200% mod this time. And this one is very interesting because it has a 50% base chance to slow the target. And that's conditional based on lightning critting. So essentially this is just sort of an upgraded version of Titus's delay buster. And you know, slow is a very powerful status when you can land it reliably. It indirectly increases your damage by leading to more chaining opportunities, while also indirectly increasing your survivability at the same time, since the enemy is going to take fewer turns and have less opportunities to retaliate. So definitely don't sleep on this ability. I think it's very strong, you know, especially in the hands of a manual player. All right, last but not least here is Lightning's Limit Burst. And again, we have a range four, range height one skill. And prior to the damage, Lightning is getting another buff on this one, and this one is giving her 40% slash resistance penetration. It is also bringing a secondary effect, and that's after the damage, you will be applying a 38% lightning in peril. So because that in peril is coming after the damage, it won't be hitting quite as hard as some of the other limit bursts out there that apply that effect pre-damage. At the same time though, you know, both of these effects are very nice, and I do like this limit burst here quite a bit. Okay, next up, let's quickly touch on lightning sub jobs. And let's first start with her main job sub. And here she's getting two additional attacks Attacks. Both of them are at a 165% mod, one which is bringing a 25% chance to disable, and the second is actually another missile-based attack, and that's bringing a 39% attack and magic break. And these skills here are decent enough, but I don't actually envision many cases where I would use this sub job. I think in 99% of cases, you're going to actually be wanting to run her sniper sub job that we'll talk about here next. And one of the nice things about snipers, it does give her access to the target ability, and that gives her an increase in her range as well as 40% defense penetration. So that actually gives Lightning multiple ways to get up to an 80% defense penetration, which is pretty nice. More importantly though, is the added utility and range that this job is going to give her. She's getting that slow shot to break the target's agility. She gets access to another status ailment with disable shot. And perhaps most importantly is that she's getting access to dispel shot, which is going to allow her to strip away enemy buffs or hate from a long range. So I do like this sub job quite a bit. You know, I think it rounds out her main job 
quite nicely. Now, Lightning does also have access to the Viking sub job. And, you know, I think I've said as much before, it's not a good job. It never really was and has aged very poorly. I will say the one redeeming factor about Viking is that the passives that come along with it are pretty decent. And I think that's probably why they gave her this job. So we'll take those and, and sort of forget about everything else here with this sub. Okay, so that was Lightning's kit. But here is the Vision card that is going to get released alongside her. And on the JP side, I think grabbing this card was definitely a no-brainer. For the global side, though, there is definitely some overlap here with the Barra's Vision card and that 20% area resist to the party. And unfortunately, in terms of running area resist in a sub slot, I just don't find that there's good value in doing that because area resist is penalized so heavily for being run in that slot. So that's definitely a concern, you know, when it comes to this Vision card, if you do have Ibarra's already. We'll have to kind of see if they make any adjustments to this card when it does come to global. And of course, what they end up doing in terms of any sort of limited bestowed ability. Aside from that overlap issue, you know, this is a very good vision card. And, you know, definitely if you don't have Ibarra's vision card, I think you grab this one for lightning, no question. It has a good combo here of defensive and offensive stats on this. And in the age of damage penetrations, area and single target resists are essential to have, I think, for pretty much any PvP party. This bestowed ability here for 15 accuracy to lightning is very, very strong for her. Again, not having any sort of guaranteed hit in her kit, she's going to want every bit of accuracy that she can get. Now next up, and I did want to throw in and talk about Lightning's weapon here really quick, because I think it is quite an amazing item, and definitely a step above most of the collaboration equipment we've seen in the game for quite a while. Now Lightning, of course, does use swords. In that case, you might think that just giving her Coral Sword would be a no-brainer. But for Lightning specifically, her weapon is quite a bit better. It's able to match the Coral Sword with that 30 Lightning attack for starters. And in lieu of the 15 slash attack we have on Coral, instead it's getting that 30% reduced counter chance. And I will say that this passive has quickly become one of my favorites in the game, just making it that much harder for an enemy to proc reflex or other annoying counters. And it's really nice to have on this weapon because you're not really compromising anything to get it. Because as you can see here, when Lightning herself is equipping the Enkindler, she's getting 15 slash attack, 15 missile attack, and 15 accuracy. So just a staggering amount of stats that she's able to get here on this weapon. Now, personally, I do really like this one as an accuracy version too. In that case, you would be getting 33 total accuracy between the base stats and the passive effect, which is pretty close to an Alex ring level. And by doing that, you're able to actually free up a slot where you can use armor on her and walk away with nice accuracy as well as that extra mitigation. Having all of these passives here on the sword has the side benefit of freeing up a couple of trust stone slots for you as well, because there is just so much already covered Covered here on this weapon. So yeah, I, I really just wanted to highlight this because we've never really seen a weapon in the game have this kind of power, and I think it definitely plays a role in the viability of this unit. Alright, next here I have a mock build, and I don't usually tend to do these, and that's just because builds are so situational. I have had a lot of requests for them though, so you know, here is sort of my take on just sort of an all-around build here for Lightning. And in terms of the vision card setup, you know, we do have our mitigation in the form of area of effect and single target resistance, as well as HP up from the Igayan card. Paired with that, we do have a bit of offense as well, coming in the form of Lightning's vision card, the Scorpion Sentinel card, and the Curl vision card. For equipment, it's a no-brainer, you know, just give her that Enkindler that we just talked about. It's quite amazing. Paired with that, I do give her the black garb. And for non-evade units, I do like to give them a shield type of this item. And that's because it has pretty decent defense on it, as well as that 20 defense penetration. So this item, along with lightning self buff, is going to have her in a position to ignore defense entirely, which is very, very strong. For a TMR here, I'm using Titus's shoes. And that's just for a bit of agility and crit value. I think the effect on it for lightning is actually pretty good too. It gives that combination of crit and crit damage. But this TMR is definitely not vital to the build. You know, you can use whatever is going to fit your situation or your build goal. I will say that I don't think Lightning needs Ziza's Bells at all. You know, she has several different ways to restore AP. And as we talked about earlier, you know, especially if you had her paired up with Cloud, he does bring that Soldier's Honor buff, which does help AP sustain quite readily. Now, this is not a hyper accurate build, but I have put some focus on it with Odin as her Esper, as well as this Trust Stone loadout here with both luck and accuracy sets. And overall, this loadout
Roundabout would have her somewhere in the neighborhood of 360 to 370% accuracy, which I find generally has units hitting in the 60% or so range on high evade units. Remember though that she does have access to that 30% accuracy buff. And obviously, you know, you could make changes here to the build to add additional accuracy, you know, very easily if you needed it. At least on global right now in the auto metagame, you know, evade is definitely on a bit of a downswing, but I do like that this build here can sort of handle pretty much anything coming at her. In terms of the trust stone setup here, you can see on the offensive side, which is the right side, due to all of the passives that she already has covered on her sword, I've been able to invest in some passives that I might not normally be able to with other units. Things like crit damage up or two different types of damage penetrations in both missile and slash res pen. I did give her here both crit chance up as well as dex because I'm really trying to maximize my chance of landing her slow ability. In lieu of that though, you could maybe consider throwing in an acquired AP up passive. Personally though, I felt that lighting had enough ways to restore AP that I had a little bit of room to uh, to use something else there. In terms of the defensive trust stones here on the left side, I tend to keep those pretty generic so that they'll fit most situations and can also be used on different units. I do like to throw in that element debuff resistance of 25, especially onto my lightning units, just to try and give them that little extra protection against various earth and perils out there. But you could also consider putting earth or stop resists here as well if, if those were things that you were specifically worried about in a future meta. All right, so here is a quick look back on our anticipated timeline for 2022. And Leela the Bold is sort of hot off the presses here on the global side. So we're currently looking at sometime in mid to late September for the Final Fantasy 13 collaboration. And in terms of other lightning based units to consider, we've actually just gotten several units and vision cards here on the global side. So nothing else for the lightning elements is on the imminent horizon. If you didn't pick up Esther or Ibarra before, you will have another chance though at our next global festival. And of course, we do have Orlando EX coming shortly after the Final Fantasy XIII collab. And his EX is actually quite good in my view, especially for a cost 80 unit. So there's no shortage of time here for us to save up and prepare for this event. And we know the majority of units that we're going to be picking up here along the way to that anniversary are in the permanent pool as well. Obviously the one wrench in that plan is of course the summer units and our next global festival. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. I have some guesses here as to what I think is gonna potentially show up there, but you know, it, it's anybody's guess at this point. On the counterpick side though, Earth is notably getting Queen Mashiri directly before Lightning's release. And that was actually the unit that I just looked at in my last future look. So if you haven't checked that one out, I, I will post a link to that above. And Queen Mashiri is certainly gonna be a huge threat to be wary of. I just feel that until Earth gets a bit more love this year, and especially gets sort of a premier frontline tank, they're really not in the best elemental meta position in my view. Even so, you know, Mashiri does have a very large AoE barrier break with a very high modifier on it. So that's certainly gonna do a number here on Lightning and pretty much anybody else within her element. So what's my verdict on Lightning? Well, as we've talked about, you know, she's going to be a great damage dealer with large area of effect damage. And I think that she will be competitive with other top cost 90 units out there. Her kit is versatile with multiple damage types in both Slash and Missile, and she brings nice utility as well with both Slash and Lightning based in Perils. From a survivability angle, it's all centered around her buff. If she has that barrier and resists online, she's in a very good spot. If it's not on or they're dispelled or broken, she's much less tanky and she will go down fairly easily. Another huge plus with this unit is that pursuit attack, you know, and as we've seen with Astrius and Noctis previously, having that follow-up attack does wonders in terms of dealing with not only an enemy's immortal spirit, but also re-raise as well. So her having access to that in addition to a large area of effect skill is very, very powerful. On the other hand, you know, in terms of damage penetrations, she doesn't have any passively, and she needs her limit break in order to provide her that slash res penetration. And that's not always ideal as, you know, you may not be in a position to actually use that limit burst. Perhaps it's on a second Guild War strike and she's already used it. On top of that, she doesn't have access to any missile res penetration either. Lightning is also coming in with a mid-level of accuracy. So for any sort of evade meta, you know, Lightning is going to need to invest heavily into an accuracy build, and a little bit of her survivability will suffer as a result of that. Her main job is also a little bit limited when it comes to range height on her attacks. So I do think that this is another reason why that sniper sub job is so very important for her, especially for maps where there's a lot of height disparity between the various tiles, as otherwise she may not be in a good position to use any of her main kit attacks. 
My last con here is definitely a nitpick, and that's more centered around my disappointment that she doesn't have access to more chaining abilities. Her only chaining attack is actually her limit burst. So I really wish that she had access to another two or three hit attack in her kit so that she could slide directly into a nice lightning PVE chaining team. Because really she has most of the other tools to be amazing in that setup. Adding on to that, you know, she doesn't have access to use the Exorcist or a gift like no other vision card abilities. So I think we'll have to hope that down the road that maybe Gumi adds a chaining vision card for missile or axe based jobs. You know, we'll just have to see. So my final word here is that Lightning is definitely not a bruiser and nor is she a glass cannon, but she's kind of towing the line sort of in between those roles. She's going to be a high damage threat that can definitely fit in and work well alongside either Cloud or Esther. The question I think is, you know, what are you going to do if you already have both of those units? In that case, Lightning, in my view, is definitely more of a side grade or a situational pick depending on the map or the current meta at the time. And not a hugely compelling upgrade over those top end Lightning Slashers that we already have available to us on Global today. There is also Orlando EX to consider as well, who is a strong unit in his own right. So Lightning is definitely coming into an element on global that is just stacked right now with options. And you know, we didn't even mention Ibarra yet either. And with only three slots to fill in your PvP party, there will be a lot of tough choices to make if you opt to pull for Lightning as well. All right, so that was my preview into Lightning. And if you're wondering about her banner mate, Snow, I will be working on him next. As you can see from the kit overview, you know, Lightning is definitely a strong unit. As I said though, you know, as a player myself who has all of those other options within her element, I'm just finding it a little bit more of a struggle figuring out who I'm gonna take out of the team in order to fit her in. And that's really gonna be the crux of it. You know, even her vision card is something that we actually already have covered in Ibarra's vision card today. For any newer player out there though, or or if you skipped out on Cloud or Esther, I think she's definitely in a similar vein to them and should be able to serve you quite well as a unit to build around and maybe form up your lightning element for the first time. She does offer a lot of versatility in her multiple attack types and even some nice team utility with those various imperils and the agility and accuracy buff that she brings. So again, I think she's very strong, but maybe just not a unit I see defining or launching a new meta around herself. I wanna know what you guys are thinking about this one though. Are you seeing lightning as a meaningful upgrade over our current roster on Global? Or is she simply just another nice option in an ever-expanding elemental toolkit? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. On that note, you know, what did you think of the expanded preview that I did today to include a mock build and a look into the event equipment? Definitely let me know how you felt about that one too. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, help us grow and be notified of my future videos. And that's really all I have to say for today. So as always, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one.